What are the top five intermediate level apologetics books you need to read? Let's first define what we mean by intermediate level apologetics books. Maybe you've been reading some of the more popular level introductory apologetics books from authors like J. Warner Wallace, Lee Strobel, or Frank Turek, and you're ready to level up. But when you finally saved up enough money to buy that elusive copy of two dozen or so arguments for God, you opened it up and found this. Yikes. To be sure, advanced books like these are very helpful to those who understand them. And understanding them is a much easier task when we have a bridge between the introductory to the advanced. This list is that bridge, the intermediate. Before diving into our list proper, here are some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. Number nine, Intermediate Logic by the Canon Logic series. If you wanna understand the absurd hieroglyphics of formal logic, this is a wonderful place to start. Provided by the Canon Logic series, Intermediate Logic masterfully explains propositional arguments. Everything from truth tables to formal proofs of validity and even digital logic are laid out with a manageable learning curve. The layout is beautiful, the side notes are helpful, and the exercises are actually quite fun. This may not be an apologetics book officially, but it is nonetheless invaluable to any apologist who wants to understand formal logic. On top of that, though Intermediate Logic isn't a crisp Christian book, there is a noticeably clear Christian presence within its pages as it often uses theological questions or propositional statements from scripture as examples in its exercises. Number eight, Reason for the Hope Within by Michael J. Murray. This book is a collection of essays from several authors on assorted topics regarding apologetics and philosophy of religion. How it distinguishes itself from the average book of its kind is its eclectic mix of advanced topics discussed in simpler ways. Though there is no shortage on stock philosophy of religion books, Reason for the Hope Within is a distinctly Christian collection written by very capable but somewhat lesser known authors. Number seven, Is There a God by Richard Swinburne. Coming in at around 120 pages is one of the most renowned works in classical Christian apologetics and the most often recommended by professional apologists and Christian philosophers. Swinburne offers so much of value in such a short amount of time that reading this is a no-brainer for anyone interested in the philosophy of religion. Number six, The Universe Next Door by James W. Sire. This book is an absolute gem. Sire begins the book by defining what a worldview is and then offers eight questions that can be used to identify worldviews. These are the big questions like, what is the meaning of human history? What happens to a person at death? What is the nature of prime reality? Each subsequent chapter is an exploration of how various worldviews would answer each question, with a brief critique from Sire at the end. If you're unfamiliar with what other religions, philosophies, and worldviews believe, you need this book. And that's it for our honorable mentions. While I would highly recommend any of them, these next five are absolutely essential. Number five, Mapping Apologetics by Brian K. Morley. Before seriously setting out on your apologetics journey, it would be helpful to bring a map. By that I mean, it would be helpful to understand the various apologetic methodologies and which one you most align with. The world of apologetics is vast, and the style or techniques for inquiry, argument, and teaching vary greatly. Morley's book is among the best that compare contemporary approaches to apologetic thought. While I did enjoy the CounterPoints book of the same topic, I found Morley's book to be an even greater exposition, both in its scope and quality. Mapping apologetics masterfully guides the reader through presuppositionalism, reformed epistemology, combinationalism, classical apologetics, and evidentialism. If you're a little lost as to which camp you may fall in, Morley's map will help you navigate this tricky terrain. Number four, Christian Apologetics by Norman Geisler. For over half a century, Geisler influenced the world of apologetics, writing over a hundred books, and Christian Apologetics is one of his absolute best. 
In terms of exhaustive or comprehensive single volumes, few have such a striking sense of direction as Geisler's work. The first half of the book is a deep dive into epistemology and developing a reliable test for the truth of a worldview. The second half is a demonstration of why Christianity uniquely passes this test with flying colors. Number three, Philosophical Foundations for a Christian Worldview by J.P. Moreland and William Lane Craig. This book is a beast. Philosophical Foundations will take a lot of time to read, and depending on your budget, may cost a pretty penny. But it's worth your time and your money. Though the over 600 page count may feel intimidating, this tome is a treasure trove of information. And what's more, the determining factor for its place on this list is its readability. As opposed to the other similarly sized textbooks like The Blackwell Companion to Natural Theology, Foundations is a slow drip and a gentle learning curve that rewards its readers with a deep understanding of philosophy and apologetics. Number two, five proofs of the existence of God by Edward Fazer. At a certain point in the average apologist's journey, you may start to think that you've heard all of the good arguments out there. After exploring the Kalam, teleological, contingency, ontological, and moral arguments, you may wish there were still yet uncharted territory just waiting to be discovered. If that's you, I have good news. There is. Depending on your school of thought, there are entire ecosystems of arguments that don't reach the popular surface level. The Aristotelian, Neoplatonic, Augustinian, Thomistic, and rational proofs are arguments for God that are not often known or talked about, but pack a powerful punch. One of the reasons for this may be the length required to properly unpack these arguments. On average, Fazer's versions are 50 premises long, but Fazer wastes no time and offers no meaningless filler. Everything here is concise and contributes to the end goal. One thing I really appreciate about Fazer's writing, similar to Swinburne, is the confidence with which he writes. Most books that attempt to convince the reader of their view often appeal to quotes from other authors, relying on consensus to persuade or at least influence the strength of their arguments. There's nothing inherently wrong with this, and as a writer and researcher myself, I really appreciate books that go all out on the quotes. But there's something special about a philosophy book that is nearly devoid of quotes. When I find a book like this, it's always due to one of two reasons. Either the author is a novice who hasn't researched his topic well enough, or the author is a genius who has mastered his craft so well that his arguments don't need much outside support. Authors like Swinburne, C.S. Lewis, and Fazer are able to explain complex subjects in simple ways because they understand these subjects so well. Do yourself a favor and get a copy of this book. And finally, at number one, Reasonable Faith by William Lane Craig. Was there any doubt this would be here at the top spot? Some may scoff at this decision because of its mainstream popularity, but sometimes we have to acknowledge that some things are popular for good reason. This book is the perfect encapsulation of what this list is all about. If On Guard is the prime example of a beginner apologetics book, and The Blackwell Companion to Natural Theology the quintessential example of an advanced apologetics book, then no other book could be a better representative of the intermediate than Reasonable Faith. Craig's book book is a perfect embodiment of classical apologetics that seeks to establish the existence of God first and then the truth of Christianity after. The best part of the book, however, is often the most overlooked. Near the very beginning, Craig laments the absurdity of life without God in a concise yet hauntingly poetic way. It is here that Craig's mastery of writing and rhetoric are showcased brilliantly. If for whatever reason you haven't picked up this book yet, you need to. Any apologetics bookcase with this book absent is incomplete. But with that said, this completes our list of the top five intermediate apologetics books. Have you read any of these books? What did you think of this list? Are there any books that weren't mentioned but you feel should have been present? Please let me know in the comments below. And if you found any value in this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing for more apologetics content. If you'd like to support this ministry financially, please consider visiting the standardized apologetics Patreon page. I'd like to end this video with a shout out to these Patreon supporters who help make content like this possible. I can't express my gratitude enough for your encouragement.